and our Redeemer. Today's gospel is another one of those you may have learned as a child that speaks and reflects the divinity of Jesus. It also, like many others, has phrases which have become part of our cultural norm, weaving into everyday conversation. Phrases like baptism by fire, signs of the times, kiss of death, the powers be, and so on. The phrase walking on water has become synonymous with speaking of someone perfect or more often someone who thinks they're perfect. The phrase he or she thinks she walks on water comes to mind. As a child, I thought the most important part of the story was that Jesus had walked on water. As an adult, I see the scripture as having a completely different significance, but I get ahead of myself. Today's Old Testament reading from Kings tells of Elijah's conversation with God, which reflects what we talked about last week, why Moses and Elijah represented the law and the prophets at the transfiguration of Jesus. Today's scripture reveals how Elijah was the other person, in addition to Moses, who had seen God, and also seen a storm from God. Today's uh, theme is storm, literally and figuratively. (laughs) And because we celebrated the transfiguration last week, we must go back a little bit to tie in the gospel for today. At the beginning of chapter 14 of Matthew, we're told that Jesus had just learned of the death of his cousin John the Baptist and withdraws to pray. Jesus sees that the crowds have followed him and he has compassion for them and cured their sick. When it became evening, the disciples became concerned because it was time to eat and they were in a deserted area. Jesus, rather than doing what the disciples asked of him, to leave the area and tell everyone to go home to eat, says, no, we will feed them. He then takes on the role of Jewish host, honoring the tradition of a sacred meal, and at the same time giving a glimpse of the Eucharist, that he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the flock of 5,000. It is immediately after the feeding of the 5,000 that today's gospel begins. Although the feeding of the flock and Jesus walking on water are the only miracles found in all four gospels, it is only mentioned in the gospel of John that Jesus saw the crowds were going to take him by force and make him king. So he sent the disciples away in the boat, dismisses the crowds, and withdrew once again to the mountain alone. We can understand why Jesus would be tired from grief, from his compassion and healing of the crowds, and his understanding that his time is beginning. At some point early in the morning, which is translated to in the fourth watch of the night, meaning between 3 and 6 a.m., Jesus saw the wind battering the boat far away from the land, and he begins to- walking towards them. We can visualize what the disciples must have seen. It's the middle of the night, the wind is blowing their boat around, and there's probably a mist on the water so that they can't really see very far away at all. They know that awful storms can start at a moment's notice on the Sea of Galilee. They've most likely been asleep and were awakened in confusion, which may have added to their fear. Jesus comes to them wanting to help, to calm their fears, and they don't recognize him. When he speaks, 
Peter still wants confirmation that it's Jesus. As far as the disciples know at this point, Moses is the only one that has control over the seas. So they have never seen this before. So he says to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. As Peter begins to walk, fear overtakes him just as it does when he denies Jesus before the crucifixion. And he begins to sink in the water, not unlike what I did this morning before the 8 o'clock service, when it was storming heavily here at the cathedral. As we know, Jesus was there to save him. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. What stands out to you in this gospel lesson today? How might we respond in this situation if we were part of the story, if we were there? Where in the story would you imagine yourself to be? Would you be one of the crowds following Jesus, perhaps waking up in the storm and watching the boat and knowing that there's people out on the sea in the boat, wondering if they'd be tipped over and talking to your neighbors about they should have stayed on dry land, they should have known better? Or do you identify with one of the disciples on the sea in the storm, afraid that you don't swim well enough to get back to shore, possibly remembering friends who've died in storms such as this? In your fear, would you remember the miracle of the loaves and fishes and know that Jesus would be there to protect you? Or maybe, you identify with Jesus more, which is totally okay. The human side of Jesus, who sees your friends, your followers, getting caught in a raging wind. You want to protect them, so you get to them as quickly as you can, but then they're scared of you. Jesus reached out his hand and said, don't be afraid, I am here. I will calm the seas for you. Give your fear to me. I am strong enough to handle your fear, to calm it. And Jesus asks us to reach out our hands to one another. Although we may not be able to calm the seas as Jesus did, we can be there for one another. Just as a storm on the sea is frightening, it's frightening to reach out your hand in need. Just as it can be frightening to take someone's hand, to say, I'm here for you. We must cross boundaries as the disciples crossed the sea to reach one another, to take one another's hand. The boundaries we have created of what we think church is about and how we think church should be. About who is responsible for sharing the love of Christ. We must cross the boundaries of fear and have faith that we are safe because Jesus is keeping us safe. We must cross the boundaries of our own self-will, of staying in our self-contained worlds, of thinking that someone else will take care of the problems, someone else will step forward to help, Someone else will spread the love of God. As Paul says in his letter to the Romans, but how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have not heard? 
and how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We are being sent. Be the feet of someone who brings good news. Amen.